Hey, hello, this is Jim. I'm going to walk you through doing the workshop today. This is the Containers and Cloud Native Roadshow DevTrack Module 1. And uh, we're going to be using this lab guide, which is broken down into pages or chapters, you know, 1 through 5. You can get all of them and save them off into a PDF by clicking on that bottom left entry. And there's a whole bunch of great reference material. As you work through this, you may find that you'd like to have a copy, and, and there it is. That's how you get it. So the first thing we're going to do is um, basically work through um, the, the process of doing a migration toolkit for applications. So what I've got is a, a guide here that takes us so through analyzing uh, through uh, a, an IDE, Integrated Development environment, the, the uh, MTA, the Migration Toolkit for, toolkit for uh, Applications. This is to analyze uh, legacy Java code and figure out if you can put it onto a modern open source uh, Java implementation. So uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll access the Code Ready Workspaces. We'd click here to log in. I've done that. And uh, at this point, uh, there's no code in here. This uh, Thea is you know, part of basically the, the integrated development environment itself. It's written uh, with on uh, Eclipse J as a front end, and the back end is VS Code, the VS Code code base from uh, Microsoft's open source project. So, uh, we, and then I'm also logged in into an OpenShift instance. And the, the guide tells you how to do that as well. So uh, I'm going, I've opened my workspace. And now I'm going to bring in my uh, source code so I can start working with it. So the way we do that is going to be with uh, the git command. I'll git clone. Uh, i got a box that opens up here. Paste that. Hit enter. And tell it I want to select projects as the location. And now you can see the code base starting to, to come in here. I'm just going to leave it right where it's at. Close that box. And we need to also make sure that we check out the right version. So uh, this repository has got uh, different versions for uh, different um, versions of OpenShift. So here's what we do. We go back in here. We'll use this Corcus Toolkit, symbolized by that 3D box representation. Tell it we want a terminal. And tell it to change directory into the root, uh, which we already have the project's root. And then we want to check out version OCP-4.5. So that's a, a git branch command. If I just take a look, I can see that I have uh, master and OCP 4.5 is which checked out now. And that'll match up quite nicely with what we've got for the um, container platform. OK. Uh, we're going to set up a um, analysis tool. This is uh, that migration toolkit I mentioned. And there's a symbol here for that. Shift right. And now that I clicked on that, and click on that Migration Toolkit for Applications, I can hit that plus sign and create a configuration. And that default configuration is called MTA configuration, and that's fine. The source code will want to select through the File Explorer, the monolith. And uh, then uh, we're going to tell it, we want it to convert the code to EAP7, Enterprise Application Platform for Java 7. And the destination is going to be the target. So the source is web logic and the target is EAP7. So 
a little cumbersome, but I got us there. And now we'll tell it by right-clicking on MTA configuration up here that we want to run a report. It's in the lower right here telling us preparing analysis configuration. Okay, I can open the report. Now this toolkit will uh, pr provide an, a nice report format. And it tells us here there are 22 story points. A story point is kind of a, a evaluation that gives you an idea of relative effort to do the migration. I'll click on monolith to get a more detailed report of this particular application. And I can see that I have uh, 11 mandatory incident, incidents, and the story points are 21. A potential incidents, story points of one, some optional as well. Of course, we've got the graphs here. Here's the mandatory effort and the story points associated with them. You can see that there's a fair amount of, of optional, but we don't say, hey, you got to fix the optionals, right? Just got to fix the mandatory and the potentials. So that's that's a nice report for me. I'll put it off to the side here. And uh, we'll uh, look at addressing how we, we fix this. So the first thing is if we look at our code, I worked ahead of the directions here a little bit. OK. And uh, that's, uh, that's the end of the first chapter. I'll stop the video here and start a new session.